Good day, everyone. My name is Yulia Chikunaeva, and I'm director of Clean Growth Leadership Network. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Anwar Satar from the University of Warwick, Warwick Manufacturing Group, to talk about the battery technologies. Thank you for joining us today in the series of uh, conversations that we're hosting to understand better energy storage solutions and technology evolution as one of the elements that would help us uh, fight climate change. So Anwar, to start, it would be great if you could give us a brief overview of your your work and the uh, research area that you're focusing on. Sure, yeah. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Anwar Sata. I lead the battery recycling activities at WMG, which uh, as Julia explained, which is the Warwick Manufacturing Group at the University of Warwick. Uh, my background is in chemical engineering. So I, um, I did a degree and a PhD in chemical engineering. And then after that, I worked in the industry for a while. I focused on uh, battery recycling. So uh, one of the companies was Axion Recycling, where we developed a battery recycling process. I then moved uh, to another company called EMR, which is European Metal Recycling, um, where we focused on more on the, sort of the, uh, the logistics of battery, uh, of recycling electric vehicles. Then after that, I moved to Warwick University or WMG. And here we are looking at the whole sort of breadth of the recycling process. Um, so our research focuses on uh, many different themes. Um, if you look at the battery recycling process, you've got three uh, main steps. So the first step is the pre-treatment, um, which is getting the battery ready for uh, recycling. This could involve things like dismantling, discharging, et cetera. Then you've got the processing uh, where you, you, know, you shred the batteries to concentrate the materials. And then finally, you've got the refining where you concentrate the materials and then, um, uh, and then purify them so that they can go back into new batteries. And our research focuses on uh, a variety of different themes within those three areas. Thank you. Thank you, Anwar, for this introduction. Um, now, maybe let's jump into the uh, specifics of the um, electric vehicles. And um, I think I've seen somewhere, um, maybe Bloomberg, that two thirds of uh, world's passenger vehicle sales will be electric vehicles by 2040 which is an exciting uh, proposition because uh, it's one of the ways to re reduce the CO2 emissions from um, current um, stock of the automobiles on the roads. Yeah. But in terms of sustainability, do you see any problems that we may face by this uh, electrification of the um, automobile fleet? Um, yeah, I mean, I'd call them challenges. <laughs> <laughs> Many, many different challenges. Um, so I've got four challenges, the main ones. Um, so the first one is, of course, there's the problem of infrastructure. So, um, you know, to making sure that we've got the uh, charging infrastructure wherever it's needed. Um, I mean, I think a good way that somebody was talking about, it's a good way to, uh, to, I guess, overcome something like this is to have fast charging or induction charging where the, uh, the vehicle is charged from underneath rather than plugging it in. And uh, if some, you know, if you go to the supermarket, for example, um, and you have a, a bay with this charging technology, you park up, uh, your vehicle starts charging, you do your shopping, and by the time you come back, um, you know, it should be nicely charged. That's just one example. For, uh, you know, uh, and this would be good in inner city areas, for example, where uh, the density is high and there's not enough space for everybody to have a charger at home. Another problem that you see is the um, the materials issue. So at the moment, uh, for example, if we look at the price of the, uh, the, the metals that go into the batteries, you know, they're literally skyrocketing. So if you go back last year, the price of lithium uh, was something like uh, eight or nine dollars per kilogram of lithium carbonate. At the moment, it's gone to about thirty six dollars per kilogram of lithium carbonate. And if you look at the lithium in that, so, so lithium carbonate itself is lithium and carbon dioxide. If you break it down into just lithium, because you're not really paying for the carbon dioxide, lithium itself now costs, uh, I think, something like 180 or 190 dollars a kg. So extremely expensive. And it's the same for the other metals as well, the cobalt, the nickel. Um, and of course, the reason why they're going up in price is because of the rarity. And so, you know, we need to ensure that we have the material supply as well. And that's obviously where recycling comes in. The next one is energy. So in the UK, we use something like um, 46 billion liters of petrol and diesel per year. And of course, this is a huge amount of energy. And each uh, liter of petrol and diesel contains something like 10 kilowatt hours worth of 
uh, you know, equivalent energy. And so, of course, we need to replace that with electricity. Now, I don't know, petrol and diesel cars, uh, sorry, electric vehicles are about three times more efficient than petrol and diesel vehicles. But again, you know, it's still a significant amount of energy that we need to transition. Uh, and we need to be able to generate in excess to what we generate today to heat our houses. Um, and then the final, of course, challenge is recycling. Um, you know, what do we do when these vehicles come to the end of life? And uh, of course, it's uh, we recycle them. Um, so how, how much of it do we recycle? You know, this is a, a question. And there's new regulations coming in from the EU that determines this. So, for example, they, did, um, they state that by 2030, we will have to recycle 70% of the battery. And uh, again, you know, that's a major challenge if you know what goes into the battery and uh, how difficult the, uh, the battery materials are to recycle. And I think uh, uh, just to follow on this on this last uh, challenge that you mentioned, I think in one of the inside pieces from uh, VNG Group uh, of University of Warwick, um, mm -hmm. you noted that uh, battery packs currently uh, that are currently already on the roads uh, were not designed with an end of life in mind, and exactly this recyclability of everything that goes into the uh, into the into the battery. Can you maybe elaborate a little bit and explain? the consequences of this lack of recyclability and current uh, design of the uh, of the battery packs for electric vehicles okay i'm gonna um, answer this question in a number of different ways so please bear with me um so when we first wrote that report we wrote it about uh, or we began to write it in 2019 2020 so it's a bit dated now but um the Situation has changed with respect to design. So a lot more of the battery packs that are on the, you know, coming onto the market or on the market now were designed with the end of life in mind. So that's a really good thing. Um, the ones that uh, were designed with end of life in mind, and to be honest, you know, when when the when the, a product is new, you know, this is kind of expected because uh, they they emphasize safety and cost more than recyclability. But now that you know, like th those things have uh, come to a good standard. I mean, you, you really hear about Tesla's catching fire now. Things like that. You know, whereas before it was it was almost uh, a weekly thing. And there's a lot more Teslas on the road now than there were you know a couple of years ago. And so you know that that's a good thing. Um, the other aspect of this is the materials issue. So from a materials perspective, uh, you've got different chemistries, and the different chemistries have different recyclability rates. So for example, if you look at China. They're putting in a lot of uh, chemistry, which is lithium ion phosphate. And although the lithium ion phosphate um, chemistry is potentially cheaper because it requires less uh, expensive materials. However, the issue is that when it comes to the end of life, the material has no value. And so unlike the nickel manganese cobalt, which is being used in Europe, uh, that does have an end of life value and the material can be recycled and can be recycled many times over. However, you know, if, if, if you go for a, a chemistry that's non-recyclable, you may get a bit of a, uh, a bit of a saving at the front end, but then there's significant more issues at the back end. And I think in China, they're gonna struggle to recycle these LFP batteries. Um, somebody has to pay for them at the end, and it's gonna have to be the car manufacturers. Whereas, you know, if, if we choose the slightly more expensive batteries, then we can get a whole industry that will be formed uh, to recycle these batteries. So it's, it's a double-edged sword, you know, do you save money at the beginning and you have to pay more at the end? Or do you spend a bit more at the beginning and then you know, have something at the end which you can recycle? But then I think also it's, uh, you mentioned uh, different technologies according to different countries that are implementing or uh, rolling out electric vehicles uh, currently given their policies and uh, aspirations um, as per Paris Agreement and achieving the 1.5 degree scenario. But I think there is a scope uh, potentially for uh, having a standardized uh, battery package that is used by everyone across the globe. Is there is there a challenge um, in the lack of standardization um, and uh, like uh, specifically as it comes to the design of the battery? Um, would you be able to tell us a little bit um, about why we don't have this uh, unified standard currently? Yeah, um, that's a good question. And the, the main reason why we don't have a standard, sorry, why we don't have a standard solution currently is because the technology is still in its early stages. 
So what you want to do is you want to give the the battery manufacturers, the vehicle manufacturers, uh, about 10 to 15 years in order to, um, to, I guess, perfect their designs. And then eventually, so what happens is at the beginning, you have you know, quite a few different designs. And then in the second generations, these, you know, they, they, they pick out the problems, you know, they solve them. And then eventually what happens is you get to a standardized design. Um, and that's how it works. You, know, you start off with a lot of different designs and then you know, in the next generation, they get whittled down. And in the next generation, they get whittled down. Eventually, you come to a design that uh, you know, really optimized and uh, perfected, and that that's what then leads to standardization. And I would say we probably still got another, uh, just off the top of my head, but maybe ten years or so before we get to standardization of pack design, where you know you can say the majority of the packs may then begin to look uh, like each other. However, until then, there are some features that we can put into the packs, which will make it easier for recyclers. So, for example, one of the big big things that recyclers don't want in a pack is the use of glue. So, um, you know, a lot of the time these packs are sealed with glue and, uh, you know, to, to get that pack open is then, you know, it's a very big job basically. It takes uh, well over an hour, sometimes more than two hours to get it open. Um, another thing is, uh, for example, the packs, they, it's very difficult to discharge them. Um, and this is because, you know, they all have different connectors. So, you know, a BMW pack will have a different connector to a VW pack, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but then, you know, the other issue is uh, actually communicating with the pack. So we need to put in some standard features which, which, should be, which should go into every pack so that when they do come to the end of life, the recycler can then easily recycle them. Uh, and this is something that we are in the process of doing. So, for example, we're part of a project called RECOVAS, uh, R-E-C-O-V-A-S, which stands for Recycling of EV Cells from Obsolete Vehicles at Scale. And what we do is we've, uh, and this is, uh, WMG is a big partner in this project. We've brought together companies like EMR, which is European Metal Recycling, um, one of the biggest vehicle recyclers in the world with companies like Bentley, who are part of the VW group, with companies like BMW, with Jaguar Land Rover. And essentially by the end of the project, we will produce um, sort of rules of thumb that, you know, these are sort of uh, features that should go into a pack to help with the recyclability of the pack. Well, that's very important work that you are doing at uh, VMG, and uh, you know, uh, and uh, all, it's uh, very encouraging to hear that uh, major conglomerates um, of automaking are participating because I think, you know, one of the greatest beliefs um, of CGLN is that. Uh, we need to work uh, collaboratively across academia, uh, policy making, and uh, private sector so that the actual solutions are found. With that in mind, I think, you know, it, and as we are having the uh, conversation early in 2022, maybe uh, what, we, uh, what we can conclude by is me asking um, about some of your thoughts. What do you think is one thing that must be achieved this year for us to move forward to solve the climate, uh, the, uh, the climate crisis? That's, <laughs> that's a, it's a very difficult question. And uh, I think I'm not, I'm not just going to say one thing because I don't think it's just a one-stop solution. I think uh, there's about five things that need to be, that need to come together. The first one is the technical challenges. Um, so, you know, if we can get the technical challenges done, then we can, you know, one step closer. Then there's the political challenges. And this is probably the most difficult one of them all. Um, there's also the social challenges as well, so getting people to buy into it. Um, there's the economic challenges, which are, um, of course, uh, you know, making sure that we can, we don't lose our quality of life as we transition from one to the other. And then finally, there's the um, environmental challenges. So the technologies that we do implement, we need to ensure that they're environmentally friendly and that they allow, allow us to be sustainable rather than, um, you know, as, as we currently are. Um, of those five, I would say that the one that is the, you know, the one that is the most promising or the one that's closest to being solved is probably the technical challenges. Um, and so, you know, <laughs> that leaves the other four. Um, and yeah, it's, it's uh, the, the technical challenges. I mean, we know, we already have the technologies that we'll be using in the future. Um, they need to be scaled up. Some of them are scalable. Some of them are, you know, I guess more in development at the moment. But, you know, they've proven to work. Like, for example, wind power, it's um, proven 
especially in the UK, proven on a mass scale, um, solar power in other countries. Um, I think we also need to have a proper conversation about nuclear power as well. Um, I know companies like Germany, for example, they've gone down a different route. Um, but the EU, I think, uh, I'm not sure if they've already done or not, but in the, in the process of um, considering or certifying nuclear power as a green source of electricity, which I think would be a, you know, a huge move and um, something that's definitely needed. But essentially, um, those are the, the five things that we need to do. Uh, and I can't say to you, you know, which one of those is the silver bullet because they all have to come together in order to achieve what we need to achieve. Yeah, Anwar, I think uh, you, I could not have said it better myself. I think I totally uh, share the views on the five elements and the, uh, the elements that I think are critical, you have nailed it. And um, it's about, first of all, uh, social aspects and uh, you know, consumer and general public understanding what is the right thing to do. And then from there, we roll it out and we uh, create, we have the support for creation of the technologies, uh, you know, we um, direct necessary uh, finding into uh, scalability of those technologies or their implementation, we adopt necessary policies. And at the end of the day, we uh, get uh, to the sustainable and environmentally friendly solution. So I think um, we would wish you every success uh, with your technological challenge, because I think if we have the technology, we're already halfway through, um, because a um, few years ago we didn't. And I think it's very important what you do, what you are doing, and the University of Warwick uh, WMG uh, group is doing, um, and we wish you every luck and success. And we thank everyone for your attention today. And with that, um, we hope to see you soon uh, at our next uh, events. Uh, if uh, meanwhile, you would like to learn more about CJLN, please uh, do get in touch at uh, using our email info at cjln.earth or go to our webpage cjln.earth. Thank you very much and have a lovely day. Bye-bye.